One tip I want to give those of you that are studying for the CCIE routing and switching written exam is to combine your study as much as possible with the lab exam. So that would mean labbing up topics that you may be considering yourself as just studying for the written. Don't just do that. Take it that extra step. Lab up as much as you can to help your learning for the written and also for the lab. In this example, I've set up an EIGRP topology. So we've got EIGRP AS100 running between these three devices. And one of the things that I've done is I've created a summary route on R2. And I'm going to send the summary route to R1 for a loopback that's on R3. So I've got some summarization in here with EIGRP. And let's say I'm studying the EIGRP stub behavior. And we read that by default, EIGRP stubs will send connected routes and summary routes by default. Well, you would want to go in, configure this, and see it with your own eyes. First, let's check the routing table on R1, by the way. I'll do a show IP route EIGRP. And we can see what we expect to see. And by the way, it's always a good idea. Before you run that command, close your eyes for a moment and visualize what that routing table should look like. Then run the command and see if your thoughts match the command output. Great learning exercise there. So we see what we expect. We see the loopback IP address as advertised by R2 through EIGRP. We see that summary I configured of the loopback for the R3 device. There's a 777777 network on R3 that we see. And then we see the network that is between the R2 and the R3 device. So we're seeing all of the routes and the summary from the R2 device here. All right, great. Well, now let's experiment, remember, both for the written and the lab exam with the stub feature. So I'll say router EIGRP 100, EIGRP stub. So we're getting a refresher here on how we configure it. We remember that there is additional options that we could use to control things like route advertisement more precisely, but we wanted to test the default behavior. So we make this change. The neighbors reset as a result of this change. That's something good for us to see that we might have missed in the documentation as we're studying for the written. And now we go over to R1 and we validate what they said to us in the documentation. Notice we had four EIGRP learned routes before. Now we have three. What is dropped off? The non-summary route that R2 was advertising to us before, that is dropped off. So we are seeing indeed that EIGRP stub by default is going to be sending us connected and summary routes. And we are no longer getting a route that doesn't match those criteria. Something else that we should validate is this command that we don't often use, show IP EIGRP neighbors detail. Because the documentation tells us that if we run this command, we should see that for our peer that is a stub, it indicates that in this command. And there it is, stub peer advertising connected and summary routes. Love it. And we know there's query suppression that's going to go along with that feature. And that's something else you should consider testing in a lab environment. So wanted to give this tip today on labbing as you study for the written to get really extra benefits out of that process.